Hello and welcome to the AI Impact Customer Showcase. My name is Kevin Perone and with me I'm joined by Greg from Vectra. Nice to meet you. I'm an uh, enterprise architect at Vectra. Vectra is the, the biggest cable operator in uh, Poland, serving around uh, 1.7 million households with almost 6.7 7 households in reach. We provide internet and television services to, to, uh, to, to Polish customers. So many places to start. So, so what, was the, what was the key motivation that helped you to begin your, your AI journey? One of the key points in our strategy is uh, improving our customer experience and specifically solving, the, solving their problems. Uh, we wanted to catch all the issues those customers might have, uh, and they usually surface within, within talks in our call center. And analyzing almost 300,000 calls, each taking minutes or tens of minutes, was extremely, extremely difficult. And we wanted to make it poss possible because we were losing valuable information and not knowing about customer problems. And that, that's something that just had to be solved. These are 300,000 calls that you're, that you, uh, can you describe like, what, what were the key, the key business cases that you wanted to solve for? And how, how are you measuring what success would look like in each of those cases? Uh, sure. So, first part that's uh, that's issues of our customers we were we were not aware of. Uh, we would measure amount of malfunctions or uh, complaints recorded by our customers, and we would like those to be less than uh, than than it was before. Uh, those are usually result of intermittent issues, something that you call a call, uh, you call a call center. Uh, you're telling them your internet service is kind of misbehaving, not really knowing what's going on. The person on the other side of the of the phone is doing something in the background. The internet starts uh, starts wor starts working. Uh, you're happy, but something like this happens in next couple uh, again in next couple of uh, of days, or in worst case hours, and we want to catch those uh, catch those situ situations where those problems are uh, re reoccurring. The, 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 when customers have issues with the ser with the services and that were not recorded anywhere else in the uh, in our systems. When customers record a complaint or malfunctions, it's usually way too late and they are already mad at us and I really wanted them to be to, to be happy with their with their services. If we catch those issues, uh, it usually means that there's something wrong with a with an end user device and we just simply send a technician to, to fix it. And if similar info, similar signals are coming from a larger area than a, than a single single person, that that usually means it's a matter of tuning our network and fixing the problem for all of them at once. So responding to the customer use case and ensuring a high satisfaction rate is super important. Um, were there any other business cases that you were you were you were you were working to solve either proactively or or came as a result of this uh, of this pilot? Uh, sure. There's obviously the the sales and marketing marketing part. Uh, I will probably be getting to customer experience because that's something that's really 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 important for me. Uh, but the um, the sales side, uh, that's extracting information about interest of the of, of the products that we should introduce uh, into our offer uh, as Vectra or to expand our reach into, spe into speci specific regions with specific uh, uh, either TV, t TV offering, new channels, new, uh, new movies that those custom customers are, uh, are asking about. Then also learning about what they are not interested in, not to, uh, uh, not to reapproach them with offers they, uh, they have already rejected due to, due to specific, specific, uh, specific reasons. Uh, I'd say those two would be most important. Uh, fixing the problems once and for all and not bothering customers with what they're not interested in. Amazing. So 
when you when you look at the before and after, uh, what were what was the what was the the big change? Were you able to analyze? more calls? I mean, did you have enough resources to analyze like 300 call, 300,000 phone calls to provide this level of customer support or this level of, of, of a personalization? All right. So previ previously, uh, it's a matter of, let's say, good en good enough trans transcriptions. Uh, we could get some information from it, but getting this information would require, I would say, hundreds of people uh, just to hear through those calls catch the phrases that we should be, ser be searching for, then probably getting a PhD in a rules engine, then implementing those, uh, those, those rules and having this tens or hundreds of people uh, <laughs> keeping those rules up to date uh, according to what's changing on the network, uh, according to our reach, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, doing something on, uh, on, su on such a scale is, not pro uh, is simply not, not doable. So and we put it on a shelf of almost next to impossible, and we were finally able to to solve to solve that problem once once Gemini was made and generally available. This is really cool. So you you, you developed a, a data agent that was ex that was integrating and extracting and understanding like a huge amount of data, but at the same time you're able to build an employee agent that's enabling your your staff, right? So rather than like a um, a very uh, laborious like uh, workflow on like looking for keywords. You're able to empower them by automating a lot of the heavy lifting and to help uh, provide like uh, much better customer support as well as uh, personalized offers. It, it seems. Um, what was like as a result of this was what 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 didn't go as expected or were there any any like key learnings that came about of this that you didn't expect? Um, when, when you began to uh, do, do this pilot with, with Vertex AI and, and, and the Gemini? So I would say first, uh, the first dif difficult part uh, was getting the data in a stru stru structured, form, uh, structured format. We were really struggling with it and how to handle, uh, how to handle it pro properly. It's one thing to build a P POC and wh where you have a chat and you get some info on the screen. And it's completely different, uh, completely different thing to have it structured, actionable, integrate uh, some, as a something that you can integrate into your systems or view on the dashboards. And that's the part where we uh, where we learned about function function uh, function calling, uh, thanks to people from the from the Warsaw office. Google Google, Google Teams has once again been extremely helpful in navigating. To how to how to use those tools. Uh, second thing that was uh, due to the scale of the of the data we were processing, we started re reaching API, API limits for the for the region. Not something we would ever ever expect to happen with with, with Google. Once again, first we got those uh, limits increased, and then uh, then we got guidance how to aggregate the calls, how to aggregate the files to 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 make it more more streamlined, and as a result, faster, which was. Once again, good, good, good experience for us. Amazing. Um, so you've you've been able to analyze these, these 300,000 customer calls, uh, improve the customer satisfaction scores, and uh, provide a better personalized experience for them as well, as well as enabling the team to do these kinds of things better. So, so what's next for you? Right. Uh, obviously, that's uh, uh, expanding on uh, on customer experience. Uh, that tool and having this information right at our fingertips uh, would probably uh, shorten the most uh, th those most important uh, processes for our customers, meaning the com the com malfunctions and, and complaint processes. I really hope that at least some of them would be automated, and when people come to us with a problem, they would get a result either at this during the same day or even during the same call. And next, uh, once uh, once we're uh, happy with what we, with, with what we have, uh, we'll be making this tool available to other companies in the uh, in the market in form uh, uh, in form of a available service. That's fantastic news. Uh, if you were to, well, I mean, it's it's for many for many decision makers, it's it's very hard to make this to make this jump. Everyone knows that AI is very important. But it can be very um, tedious to figure out like where to start. So, if you were to recommend to any decision maker today, what are some of the key like best practices and, and principles that you would advise them to consider when making this decision and, and uh, getting started with their POC? 
Right. So uh, that's an approach that has helped me previously with churn or through uh, next 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 best software models. I wouldn't start with a P, uh, with a P, with a POC. I wouldn't start with just touch, uh, running around the subject. Uh, my go-to strategy for implementing such solutions is to find a problem that's really pressing, something that really hurts, uh, and one of the C-level C execs that's responsible for fixing fixing the, that problem. Once you've got support of the C-exec and a problem to fix, the technology just follows and, you, uh, and you're simply solving, solving a problem with the all support you might you might expect from a, from a company fixing a problem that hurts amazing so identifying uh, a, a really sticky really hard complex problem working with stakeholders of course um would you um when, when it came to making the decision to work with with a vertex ai or or, or a gemini were, were there any like key um reasons or key uh, things that you learn that made this decision a, a, a good one for your business? Uh, I would say it was actually a pretty easy decision. Uh, first thing, that's, uh, that's the support we got through our, through, throughout our whole cloud, cloud journey. We got the support on every step and that's not always so obvious when you're working with, uh, with, with tech giants. You're, we were really led by, ha by hand and told how to uh, how to deal with uh, specific technology and specific problems. Uh, then uh, the ecosystem around uh, around the models. Uh, it was really easy to integrate in the to integrate those models into what we've already been doing in the in the cloud. Then the large context window. I imagine those two the, this tool to grow significantly or very significantly. Looking at the amount of enthusi enthusiasm it has. Uh, within our companies and uh, other companies we're in, we're in talks with. Um, finally, big context. Uh, th this big context window makes it makes it future proof. When we add additional prompts, when we add additional info, we can keep using whatever 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 we we're using. If we need to switch to different uh, to the, to different models or include additional models that uh, that we want to use, there is this whole model uh, uh, garden model. The, with those models available, or the ones that I can just put there, call, call through my cloud function, and it's there. So it, it really wasn't a difficult decision. It's wonderful news. Greg, thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure.